All right, chat. So the next thing I want to talk about is why you should play fighting games. Now, I know obviously a lot of you that watch me obviously are interested in fighting games or play fighting games already. But for some of you that are on the fence or don't really commit to fighting games as much as you want and stuff like that, I just want to talk about exactly fighting games as a whole, why you should play them and why they are so great. You know, when I first started playing fighting games, the first thing that definitely came to mind to me was it is a genre that really put the focus on me as in everything that i know that is happening i know is of my accomplishments or it is my fault that is happening you pick your characters at round start or at the character select screen and you make the decisions within the match there is no other person or factor that is messing with you as far as that goes you are making those decisions and you are manipulating the field or crackling the puzzle of what your opponent is trying to throw at you. And that is the beauty of fighting games to me. Now, there's an analogy that I made before that I stated when someone asked me, why do I like playing fighting games so much? And why don't I try other genres like MOBAs? Let's let's take a look at uh, what past Daikin had to say. Some of you may be really familiar with this clip. MOBA game, you could be with the worst people in the world. If there's a fighting game, you know what? If you batted the game, I don't got to worry about it. I'm going to just beat your ass is me versus you it ain't me and no team it ain't me losing with these other idiots if you batted the game i'm beating your ass that's what it is but nah i'm gonna lose because these idiots and guess what i'm not losing in two minutes i gotta hold that shit for 20 minutes even though i know i lost already i gotta hold it for 20 minutes i already know i lost why am i still here you trash you fed first two minutes of the game congrats we lost i gotta hold this I gotta hold it, dog. And then guess what? You know what? It'd be even worse when they like, nah, dog. We still in this. We still got it, dog. And you gotta play the whole hour match. And I'm like, bro, we lost. Why am I still here? Just let me go. Now, I don't know if I can say that any better myself in the current version because past me was speaking the actual factual right that was just straight facts uh straight from the horse's mouth as you heard so reasons i like fighting games number one is just something you just can't get authentically nowhere else as far as that pure 1v1 competitiveness as far as this type of game goes right like a lot of the games nowadays there's a lot of like team compositions and stuff like that when it comes to these games and it's not a lot of like solo accountability of me understanding and realizing that it's completely my fault there's no real like rng involved in things and stuff like that it's just me i picked my character i made the decisions and whatever happened happened and that is why i like fighting games but there is a good video that i saw a little bit of that i want to take a look with you guys talking about why you should play fighting games and i want to give my thoughts about the actual things that are being said here so we're going to take a look at this together and uh see what they got to say because i think it's very good and a very important message for people that are on the fence of fighting game. Let's check it out. The tournament arc, a common trope in anime, as well as a very divisive one. Personally, I've always had a soft spot for tournament arcs for numerous reasons. You get development for characters that haven't gotten the spotlight yet. The main character gets to show off how much they've grown. But the main thing I loved was pretty simple. Brain dead simple. You just get to see a lot of action. The goal Hell here yeah. is for the main characters to just body as many fools as possible. Tournament arcs are definitely some of the best things inside of anime. We attempt to recreate these tournament arcs on our own. We'd hook up Budokai, go to the tournament mode, and compete to see who the best player is. Bro, what happened to these type of things inside of fighting games? Real talk. Can, can we just talk about this real quick? What happened to some good old tournament modes inside of fight? We don't got that no more. The last fighting game I think of that had a tournament mode was like Tekken 7. Can we get some tournament modes again? Can we just get some fun modes inside of fighting games? I, I said this in my last video, but it's cool that the games have good online now. It's cool that we have great training room features, but can we just get some modes just for fun? To have some just fun with your boys go in there and just do some dumb shit together that's all i'm asking at the end of the day fighting games are fun but just give us a couple more things to do here and there you know so not all the time we want to be sweats we want to have some fun too i thought it was really hard oh, alpha I three didn't like it however i did like cammy i thought she was cute and i still do yo and street fighter 5 cammy is old games but then i saw something that changed my mind almost instantly uh oh street fighter 4 bro this game sucked if you guys don't know what this game is street fighter 1 when people talk about street fighter they immediately exclude this game this game is not mentioned this game sucks <laughs> Street Fighter 2, that's a Kusoge game too though. Don't, don't let people fool you. That game is some bullshit. 
not only did the video go through the history of the Street Fighter mm, series, also there's a history like documentary community as a whole. I saw iconic moments in competitive fighting games that apparently everybody had seen. That's not even just a fighting game thing, right? That's just what a good ass documentary would do. If it's a documentary about something inspirational or showcasing a community in a nice light, it really just makes you feel like, dang, bro, I want to do that. Or dang, man, like, yo, you almost feel like you want to jump up and start doing the things you, they're doing and stuff like that, right? It just really puts you in front of that thing, even though you're probably not that into it. It just the way a good storytelling documentary could do. It really puts you in the shoes of these people and make it to where you want to be part of that community. Almost. I can definitely attest to that. There's some very good fighting game documentaries that like really puts you in the, like the current era of where these things are happening. And you could really start to understand the things and connect with the uh, that era of fighting games. Justin Wong, the guy who's actually playing of Chun course, bro. Clip. You literally can't talk about fighting games without talking about like this clip, right? This is one of the most inspirational clips of all time when it comes to fighting games. The Daigo Perry, right? Evo Moment 37. It is one of the most iconic fighting game moments. If you're literally making an iconic fighting game moments of like all time, it has to be in your. It just has to be in your list. Is that iconic and that popular? It got too many people to want to play fighting games. Like, I almost wonder how the FGC would be if this moment wasn't captured the way it was. Like, what if this moment never happened? And it's not even just the moment, it's the moment on top of the lore of the players that are playing the match. Probably the best player in the US versus uh, Japan's finest Daigo Umahata, right? So Justin Wong versus Daigo, you know, match made in heaven at a grand stage with, you know, one of the biggest tournaments at the time and something like this happens. So it's just, the story around it along with what happened just makes the moments and that's why it's so iconic it just got people excited people that didn't even really know fighting games with that, like that they see something like this and it gets them excited it gets them want to try fighting games and yeah it's, it's just one of those moments this moment yeah it was a good ass moment too because cyclops is a better character than the other characters on the opponent's team but because he outplayed his opponent he earned this victory now you heard what he just said he earned the victory. Now, I was just talking about MOBA games, right? And how, like, he was just saying, like, it wasn't about, like, the character being better or something like that. Inside of MOBA games, if there are two players of equal skill, there are sometimes a point where the counter of the character is just too hard. Like, those games aren't meant for 1v1s right off the bat, first of all. In laning phases of those type of games, it's just hard. Sometimes you just get really countered, and it's up to, like the team aspects to actually help you out like you got to play like extra safe because you know you can't actually fight this character and stuff like this but in fighting games even though there are bad matchups you can still win with your skill level or about outthinking your opponent by outsmarting doing things in the match that allow you to actually overcome the odds unlike in certain other games where that just don't allow you to happen like this is what creates these moments this is why fighting games are great because you can have moments like this unlike certain games where you just can't have it i watched justin wong and daigo it's the stories man for a grudge match this set is sick bro you guys never seen this evo set even though justin Wong lost this thing it was one of the best sets i've seen of this game however before we start talking about why you should play fighting games let's look at the things people say when they say they just aren't into fighting games i asked you guys on twitter how you felt about fighting games did you like them if you don't why don't you like them the biggest factors at play, the comments that made up a majority mm. of the negative responses were basically this. Fighting games are intimidating. I don't know where to start. I can't do combos. Combos are really scary. There's a lot of people that talk about these type of things for sure. Saying that like combos are like the hard part. Well, combos are actually one of the easiest things about fighting games because combos are something of repetition practice. You can practice combos all day inside a training room. It's the other aspects, understanding the neutral, understanding your options in the match understanding how to position yourself in the situation where your opponent is trying to outthink you you know when there's an, another opposing force of intelligence that is on the opposite side of the character that is when fighting games get hard not doing your combos that is one of the most easiest things to do because you can practice that i don't know where to start i don't think those are like things people say any much like i guess nowadays back then i can understand because the resources weren't as abundant as they are now there's a lot of good resources out there now there's a lot of good communities you know you can find the discord communities or there's a lot of tech on twitter everybody's using hashtags now we have universal language with like the notation that is pretty easy we have the ftc glossary now when it comes to understanding the jargon of the community there's a lot of resources out there to help you 
know where to start and there's a lot of people that are willing to give you these resources to help you start and fighting games overall as intimidating that one i can still understand being a thing that people say i can understand why people say this because once again as i stated it is one of the most soul gaming experiences when it comes to versing someone else that is solely dependent on you right when you are playing a fighting game and you lose it is very personal it is your character that's screaming in agony it is you lose coming on the screen as a personal message to you because you failed to make the win you failed to make the right reads you failed to execute your plan correctly you know it's very personal when it comes to this experience when it comes to fighting games and i don't think a lot of people can hold all the accountability of what fighting games actually come to offer but once you get past that and just realize it's part of the learning experience you're going to lose you're going to lose a lot then that's when you can start to understand and appreciate fighting games for what they are and truly love learning experience of fighting games but fighting games have something different something that makes them an entirely different beast mm. they are one-on-one -on -one with virtually no luck factor yep. in league of legends you can play to the absolute best of your ability but you'll still lose if your teammates are brain dead in hearthstone <laughs> you can have the absolute didn't i just say that chat plan, but you might not draw the right cards in the right order yeah in rainbow six siege you might just get killed by your own teammate for no goddamn reason <laughs> I, I I hate that, bro. When you just lose because your, you your hand sucks and they got like the best starter in the world, lose. what can you, you do? Look at unexperienced players may say, "Oh, well, they had a better character. That's why they beat me." Or they were spamming me with the same move. That's spammers, not bro. But when you get better, you realize that those excuses just don't work. There's a very personal aspect to fighting games, and one thing this personal aspect is directly related to is in the competitive scene. If you guys know me, you know that I'm into a lot of things. I made an entire YouTube channel based around that idea. Do what you wanted that way. Playing these games and then you go watch your very first tournament footage. It's a beautiful thing. I still remember when I watched my first Evo after I got into Street Fighter. Even the weakest players were doing things that I didn't even know were possible. Some of the stuff they were doing wasn't even difficult. I just didn't know you could do those things. Bro, he is speaking facts. My first tournament, like I told you guys, was final round. I learned one of the most interesting things. I thought it was the coolest thing. I didn't know it existed. So I played Jin inside of the game at that time because i was told to play Jin by actually lk lk told me to play Jin when i went into his chat when i first started fighting games so i played Jin. i learned how to micro dash at the tournament after the other Jin player that i played that knocked me out of the bracket beat me and i was like bro what was that technique you were doing where you were dashing at me with your normal really fast and i was like he was like oh it's called micro dashing and you do it like this so, you know, I got my ass handed to me, but I learned a pretty cool technique and I brought it home and I was like, yo, I came out of the tournament with something pretty cool. So, it, you know, I just thought it was a pretty cool experience. Even though I got, I went 0-2 in the bracket, I learned something and I had a pretty good experience at the tournament overall. Then you root for them and you want them to win. Then you start to understand the strategies you're watching. You start to see patterns and you become more invested. Not just in the events happening, but the people. Since fighting games hinge on one player's performance, the games are also much more intimate. This leads to more excitement and emotion than any other professional gaming event that I've ever seen. Now, he did just say something about, like, you understand the games more. And that is true. Well, you know, once you, like... Especially if you got good commentators that can explain the game for you pretty well, you can understand things as well. But there's some games that are just fun to watch, even if you don't know what's going on. One of the best examples I could definitely give is Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I bet majority of the people that watch that game don't know what the hell is happening. They just see Virgil sorting up. They see Phoenix out there. They see Hulk smashing. When you see Doom missiles, you see foot dives, you see soul fist, and they get loud, bro. Cause it's the hypest shit. It's just hype. It's just, you just see it happening. And you like, bro, this shit look cheap. And this shit is fun to watch because people just getting smoked left and right, bro. You can't block it. Everybody's unblockable. It's crazy, man. You got you got infinite touches of death from zero and stuff from one hit. And then lightning loops happening. It is funny to watch. Sometimes half the fun is not even knowing what's happening. <laughs> you just are enjoying the experience of watching some good players at a game you don't understand play the game at the highest level. And there's some beauty in that as well. Hey, bro, he was sweating, boy. <laughs> then your eyes that shit, it was funny, bro. There's a lot to choose from, but I personally get very excited every time I watch this one. 
The match in question is between PR Balrog and Infiltration at EVO 2013. This was the first EVO. This was the very first fighting game tournament I ever went to was this tournament right here. I remember this moment like the back of my hand. This whole tournament was crazy. This was, I believe, the match where he picked Hakan, right? This was a very good tournament. Overall, just all the tournaments that here. I think it was just the most memorable because it was the very first fighting game tournament I ever went to. But if people who don't know, when I went to this tournament, I actually did not bring my arcade stick because I did not know casuals existed. That's how new to the FGC I was. I brought an arcade stick uh, my first month playing fighting games. So I actually don't know how to play fighting games on a pad because I thought you needed a arcade stick to get good at fighting games. This is back in 2013 where I didn't know stuff. I just seen people playing with them. So I was like, oh, if I want to get good at these games, I have to play on arcade stick. So I bought one right after I graduated from school. And for my graduation present, my parents let me go to Evo 2013 because I graduated uh, in 13. The top of the tier list will usually be dominated by characters that are actually pretty easy, almost too easy. However, infiltration Yo, bandana is shown through in this moment. Bandana this man out there. Kind of he had the counter pick ready, bro. That's OD. The scene changes. I'm horrible at Tekken, but I still love watching it because I love how it looks when it's played at a high level. I love almost every Street Fighter character ever made because they all have their own distinct designs. In a well made Yo, wait. Each of the characters when did Street Fighter get an animation like that? I don't remember that. Bond with the character that you I don't remember this animation. Games have shitty plots, Was that the trailer for the game? Is that the opening? <laughs> I don't remember ever seeing that. Self improvement with the characters that you choose to play. Since this genre is all about you and your own ability, you also get an immense sense of personal satisfaction when you get better. Now he's talking about the individuality that you can have. So, you know, we always talk about like you can have your own personality when it comes to your character. You can play a character in a completely different way than the other person. And we talked about it in another video before talking about how sometimes when you see a person, when it comes to like hard things to do, like he was just saying the hard things to do, you can almost recognize who the player is based on the type of things that they go for. Sometimes even the outfits or the colors that they play also represent them as well. So you see like a certain color of this character, like, oh, they're going for these combos. Oh, this must be this person. It has that sort of individuality inside of fighting games once you get to a certain level like he says so that's pretty good i like i like how you say to that yeah fighting games don't always tell you how to win and they could probably do with better tutorials but the games themselves aren't really that hard if you actually try and you know what to do and if you think that you inherently just can't do it that you personally lack the ability to learn these games okay well guess what this dude can't even use his hands he plays with his mouth he do got facts though burly legs do be out there smoking people with chung lee he's actually a very good player very strong player even with his disability it's, it's actually crazy when you actually see this man at tournaments and he plays he is very good i'm like yo this dude is ridiculous bro it was i forget it was a it was a what was it was he deaf or blind it was a i think blind kin player that won like a couple of matches inside of his pool ridiculous he played on stream a couple of times too this is amazing to see when players come out with these type of like with conditions like this and you're just able to enjoy the games and just have a good time and sometimes kick some ass and that's just a beautiful thing bro i love it play what interests you yep yep However, yep maybe all of the games look cool to you and you just genuinely can't decide which one fits you best so then let me break down all the main games and what they may offer you i don't think we need to go into the rest here but this is a very good video just overall just about the things he's talking about right it's just a lot of good things about why you should play fighting games he's talking about things in general he's talking about problems the issues people have with coming into fighting games uh what the genre means how the community is and stuff like that it's just overall a nice complete package uh, of course i'll put the link down in the description below for the people who want to check out the full video themselves but i definitely just want to talk about some of this with you guys in the chat because i just thought there was a lot of good information here and we, we could just sort of just pull this information apart and just explain to people a little bit better or sort of just hint at the way of why we like these type of games why are they so good and how they aren't as intimidating as they actually seem at first glance so really like this video and like i said i'll put the description down below uh so you guys can actually check it out but anyway for the people on the youtube let me know how you guys feel about anything we had to say today how you guys feel about fighting games as a whole uh is this your favorite genre of games if you're not playing fighting games as much why aren't you playing fighting games as much is it not a genre you really want to invest into or is any of the things that the person said really resonating with you and like there's something you can't get past definitely wanted to just know what you guys thinking down in the comments below anyway if you like anything we had to say today drop me a like i really appreciate it and if you want more from me follow my socials also don't forget to subscribe and turn notifications so you know next video goes live as always my name is daikin and i'll see you next time signing out